All right, so I'm going to show us how to answer classification or paragraph information. So they are quite related. Some people even call them just finding paragraph information. So, but today we are, the question is more or less of classification, but the principle is just the same thing. So I'm going to share with us um, the tips to answering either of these question type. So when we have classification, you will see an example. It's usually um, list of authors, list of whatever, and you have to mention who said what in the passage. And paragraph information, you have list of questions, talking about some, picking some ideas from the paragraph, and you have to link which paragraph, is it paragraph A, where, you, where can you find that information in the paragraph? But then it's still the same thing. So your aim is to classify or find information in the text, no matter what it is. So now the key idea here is that the question they are going to ask you are quite specific and you need to be able to classify them. So there will be distractions, there will be pitfalls, there will be something related to that statement, but you can, the answer is just one. The more appropriate answer is just one, okay? Now you have to be sure you have read the instructions clearly. So the instructions usually says that you should put in the answers, um, the, the answer to your question should be in alphabet, that is alphabet A, B, C, D. So you don't mention, you don't write um, the, the word actually in your answer script, you put in the alphabet. Even if you get it correctly, but you have mistakenly put the word list rather than the alphabet, you will miss it there. So you need to read clearly the instruction. Also part of the instruction, usually want to let you know that it is okay for you to pick one person twice, all right? So once you have that instruction, you know that if you are thinking that I've chosen option A and I'm still choosing it again, you are likely right. It doesn't mean you are wrong. So be sure you have read the instructions. So you have to skim this passage definitely as you would do for every IF passage. And then it is a good practice for you to look at the questions. If you have a passage, good practice, except it is matching heading where I don't encourage you to look at the list of headings first. But for any other question type, it's good practice for you to look at the 13 questions under that passage, noting the keywords, then you underline them, as you read through the passage, you are noting where the likely answer for what um, answer, which answer, uh, question will be, will likely be. And then definitely you will now match the words, the key words in the question to the passage. So that will help you to locate where the right answer is. So you need to carefully read around the keywords because the keywords will show case in different places and you have to be careful. Now, this question type is simple but tricky. So just like matching headings, you would have to understand what the passage is saying. You will have to read through everything surrounding that keyword. So very important. So as we will see, if the keyword you have is a, is a name or something, you have to read around it and be sure that that is the answer before you. Definitely, the questions are not in order. So you can find the answer to question one in paragraph five and the answer to question two in paragraph one. So, yeah. So you don't need to read the entire uh, text to find every uh, entire text for every question. You just need to find the keywords and match it to where you, you have it. So some letters or categories, like I said, can be used more than once or not at all, okay? That's quite instructive. So I'm going to go on to Cambridge IF15, test one, who was applying these tips. Here with me. Okay.
All right, by now you should be able to see Cambridge IS 15, text one, passage three, talking about what is exploration. And on the right side are the list of uh, questions. So it is not that clear, but please bear with me. So the instruction says, look at the following statement, question 33 to 37, and the list of explorers below. Match each statement with the correct explorer. So letter A to E. So the alphabet has been stated. Write the correct letter A to E in the boxes provided in your answer sheet. Note, you may use any letter more than once. It's quite clear and straightforward. It's IF is an exam of instruction, okay? So now let's move on to question 33. It referred to the relevance, the relevance of the form of transport used. Now you can see that me looking at this question and I'm like, oh, where, where do I get the answer? Uh, where is it located in the passage? It says 34, it described feelings on coming back home after a long journey. It worked for the benefit of specific groups of people. So now, don't let me just read through. I'll be noting that just like you would do. Now, don't forget they're talking about list of explorers and their names of people, okay? Now, you have relevance of the form of transport used. So, form of transport, okay, and the relevance. So, there's one of these guys that talked about that. It described the feelings of coming on coming back home after a long journey. He worked for, so he worked for benefit, so benefit of a specific group of people, of specific groups of people, okay? So group of people you are looking for that. He did not consider learning about oneself as an, so learning about oneself. So one of them did not consider it as an essential part of exploration. Don't forget essential, you change the meaning. It could be that he, he it is part, but not important, okay? It defined exploration, so definition here, as being both unique, so it is unique, and of value to others, not to the writer now. All right, having highlighted this, now some people will think that it's better to look for all these names, okay, and find out what they have said. And we have one, two, three, four, five, five questions, and we have five names. So some people might think it is better to look at these names and find out where, what they have said. Yeah, if that is your strategy, good. Okay, so you can as well just look for Peter Flame. But, um, you know, you, you have so many questions to answer under a passage. So let's say, like this question now, you have MCQ already, you would have, noted some things, 33, 37 is just list of uh, paragraph information, okay? Now, but let's use the other way around. We want to let the question lead us to the answer. That means you have to have a proper understanding of this question, of this um, passage, proper understanding. Now, list of explorers. He started talking about explorers, the names of explorer, just after uh, in the third paragraph. So I'm going to move this up. So there was no mention of explorers in paragraph one, uh, one and two. So we we'll go to start from paragraph three. All right, so definitely you don't have to read paragraph two for that. Now we have a name, Thomas Hardy. He said some of his novels in Egden Heat, a fictional area of uncultivated land, and used the landscape to suggest the desires and fears of his characters. He's delving into matters we all recognize because they are common to humanity. This is surely an act of exploration and into a world as remote as the author chooses. Explorer and writer. So now, because I have in my mind what the questions are all about, Thomas Hardy is not mentioned here, and he, he hasn't mentioned anything related to what I'm looking for. So it's as good as not reading this part at all. You understand? It's as good as not reading 
this part at all because it was not mentioned at all. I'm just trying to show us that it's not part of what you are looking for. Now, the answer you are looking for is likely going to start from here. So those are the tricks that will save your time. Explorer and travel writer Peter Fleming talks of the moment when the explorer returns to the existence he has left behind with his loved ones. Okay, <laughs> so the traveler who has for weeks or months seen himself on a pony and irrelevant alien crawling laboriously over a country in which he has no roots and no background, suddenly a cater is other self, a relatively solid figure with a place in the mind of certain people. Now, if you look at this place, talking about Peter Fleming, he talks of the moment when the explorer returns to the existence he has left behind with his loved ones. Now, because my strategy is that I'm looking at the article, so I don't have to answer question 33 before question 34, all right? So I'm just following what the passage is saying. So then I suddenly stumped on Peter Fleming. So he talked about Explorer returning to where he came from, where he had probably his abode. Now, if you look at someone, they were talking about something like that. He described, he described feelings on coming back home after a long journey. You can see feelings. If you want to make sure that is right, read through again, you will see the moment when the explorer returns to the existence, you can see how they frame that coming back home, okay? So I would say that just barely reading through the first statement in the passage, I would say that is him. It described, so that is A. So A talked about, A is 34, all right? Now, so I've read that. I'm looking for names. So even if I skipped all these and all that, and I look for where they talk about any other name, you can see here now, they didn't talk about, I can't see any other name here. I can't see any name. Okay, so that is not relevant to this question type. That paragraph, except I'm not saying it well, okay? It's not relevant to this question type. All right. Now, here is how some of today's explorer define the word. Ran, I don't know how to call this name. Dot the greatest living explorer said, an explorer is someone who has done something that no human has done before. Now, an explorer has done something that no woman has done before. <clears throat> so that looks like, is it unique? Is it value to other? Now, he talked about they have done something spectacular that no woman has done before, okay? And also done something scientifically useful. Yeah, so something anybody has not done before is quite unique, must be unique, and is useful. And let's see how the frame used we here, unique and value to others. Okay, so, and that is the name, Ran Fern, something like that. So I'm going to say this guy talked about question 37. Okay, now, Chris Bonifin, a leading mountainer, felt exploration was to be found in the act of physically touching the unknown. You have to have gone somewhere new. So according to this guy, you have to have gone somewhere new. Do I have that in my question? Um, he referred to the relevance of the form of transport use. I've, I've found this one. It worked for the benefit. Then he did not consider learning about oneself as an essential part of exploration. So I haven't found this guy. That this is, you have to have gone somewhere new, no. And there is a full stop here. So everything they have to talk about, Chris Bonin thing, ends here. Okay, so um, annotate please. And yeah, full stop there. Now, this guy, then Robin, 
a campaigner on behalf of remote so-called tribal, pe tribal peoples said, a traveler simply records information about some far off world and reports back. But an ex now, look at what he said, a traveler, okay, does this, but an explorer, an explorer changes the world, okay? An explorer changes the world. Now, and there is a full stop there, okay? So that is all they have to talk about this guy. Let's see what um, relates to, to him. He worked for benefit of specific group of people. Now they talked here, they said, this guy, a campaigner on behalf of remote so-called tribal people. You can see, on behalf, he was working for these tribal people. Okay, look at where they put that was working on behalf of these tribal people. Now we can still review all these. Um, let's say that is D. All right. Okay. Now, another name surfaced here. Wilfred, who crossed Arabia's empty quarter in the 46 and belongs to an era of all merchandise travel. Now they are talking about traveling. You, you remember, they talk about tra uh, transport use, okay? So anything related to that, you're already like, oh, suspecting something there. Now, all merchandise travel, now lost to the rest of the of us, told me if I'd gone across by camel, this is a means of transport. When I could have gone by car, another means of transport. So the relevance now, it would have been a stunt. To him, exploration meant bringing back information from a remote place, regardless of any great self-discovery. So this guy talked about, it means the rele relevant of the form of transport use. So if he had gone with a car, it would have been his taunt. <laughs> this is a funny guy. So that is E, okay? So explorers goes to a remote place where you where car cannot go go to. That's why it's merely saying if I if I'm right. Now, then the last point here say he did not consider learning about oneself as an essential part of exploration. So if you look at it, it says exploration meant bringing back information. So many people have said that from a remote place, remote place, regardless of any self discovery. So all that matters in exploration is you bringing back important information, okay, from somewhere remote, regardless of any, no matter what you discover by yourself, any learning about yourself is never going to be an essential part of exploration to this guy. So we have 33E, 34A, 35D, 36, E 37B. Now, if you look at all we have used to answer this question, they are all in, in fact, paragraph five alone, we fetch you four of these. And I think we only found one in paragraph three, just to make sure that, um, okay, you can see very straightforward, very straightforward. I'm going to entertain um, questions now. Here with me. No, no, 